Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to provide an introductory demonstration of infrastructure as code using the powerful automation platform called Chef. So to begin, let's have a quick recap of what is infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code, well, traditionally, when managing IT infrastructure and um, a classical data center, Many IT teams relied on, as you can see here, manual configuration, custom scripts, outdated tools to manage their infrastructure, which resulted in many errors and slow deployments. Infrastructure as code is a new approach that allows our infrastructure, our actual data center, our resources, our servers, and all other computing resources, backend databases, and so on, to be managed with the same tools and processes that we use to manage our software. So we can, in effect, treat our infrastructure as code, thus the name. <laughs> so we can use such tools as version control, continuous integration, continuous delivery, code reviews, and automated testing. This allows our infrastructure to be changed more easily, rapidly, and safely. Excellent. So how is it done in reality? Well, at a very high level, what we do is we describe our infrastructure using a high level descriptive or declarative language such as yaml and this allows us to manage our configurations and to automate the provisioning and deprovisioning of resources and to automate the deployment of our inf infrastructure and precisely because we're using the existing and best practice tools from software development it allows us to leverage the benefits that we have developed in managing software over all these years and it allows us not only to provision, if you like, to deploy the infrastructure, but all the processes governing the management of said infrastructure. That's important. That's, that's a key distinction that differentiates infrastructure as code from, should I say, infrastructure automation. The difference is infrastructure automation just involves replicating steps multiple times and reproducing them on different and several servers. Whereas infrastructure as code goes far beyond that it allows us to provision not only the infrastructure, but all the processes governing um, the management of said infrastructure. Okay, and lastly, the knowledge of server provisioning, configuration management, and deployment is no longer, so to speak, caught up in the individual sysadmins. We can now, in effect, take advantage of an entire DevOps pipeline, and developers can easily engage in the activities because they can easily write infrastructure code in the languages that they are familiar with and a whole host of tools have sprung up to make infrastructure as code easier. I list them here. You see Vagrant, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, Salt, Terraform, CloudFormation, Console, and so on. There are many, many tools. The tool, or should I say, the powerful automation platform that we're going to focus on in this video is called Chef. Before we begin, I must also give you a quick overview of Chef. What is Chef? Well, we're going to use the platform that's available at learn.chef.io. And at this URL, you're brought to this page here. Um, what I want you to do briefly is to click on Docs, and you will see the various components that make up the Chef automation platform. We're going to focus on, in this video demonstration, on Chef Infra. So let's briefly click on Chef Infra to see what it consists of. So Chef Infra is a powerful automation platform that transforms inf infrastructure into code. Excellent. So whether you're operating in the cloud, on-premise, or in a hybrid environment, Chef inf Infra automates how infrastructure is configured, deployed, and managed across your network. So you can see the graphic here. These are the various components that make up um, what you, the resources that you will need when running Chef. So we have cook style, test kitchen, chef spec, chef and spec recipes, and cookbooks. And these are uploaded to it. This, these run on the Chef workstation, which typically will be your laptop or desktop for the purposes of this video demonstration. And then we'll have a Chef server where you can deploy the various artifacts, APIs, data source, and so on. And then the various clients that you're actually managing. So we will be using Chef workstation. Fine, these are the various components. At this stage, it'd be wise of me to point out that I'm not going to read all of this off. You should take your time and go through these. My goal was to, is to make this video, so to speak, as short as possible. But for you to follow along with this video, you would want to give yourself at least twice the time, twice the length of whatever this video is. Why? Because I'm going to skip over the text. I'll point out the key things, but I'm going to skip over it so that I can just focus on 
the various steps of the demonstration with the view that if you're trying this at home, one, you're guided should you hit any pitfalls or problems, you will see how I, I, I overcame them. And two, if you hit a pitfall that you cannot overcome, well, you can simply follow along with my video and see exactly what should happen. Thus, you will achieve, so to speak, the learning outcomes, pedagogically speaking, by following my video as if you had done it yourself. Okay, that's great. So I'm gonna go back through this website now. I'm now going to go over briefly the software requirements that are necessary in order for you to complete this lab. And I'm gonna highlight some of the snags or issues you may encounter at this point, just so you're aware in case they will be showstoppers for you. So we're going to manage our fleet with Chef Infra. This is going to be the, the purpose of our demonstration. So this lab provides a wonderful hands-on experience of infrastructure as code concepts, fine. It is, it is estimated this lab session will take between one hour and 40 minutes and two hours approximately. So I wish to highlight some key points before you begin the lab session. So there are three pieces of software that you will be required to download and install on your local laptop or desktop PC. So please ensure you download the correct version corresponding to your operating system type and version for your laptop and PC. The three pieces of software you will need to download and install are Oracle VirtualBox Manager, Vagrant, and Chef Workstation. Be aware that if you do not have these applications installed on your laptop desktop, I recommend until you, that you wait until you're asked to install the software, as helpful installation instructions are provided, provided at that time. Very good. At one point, you will be required to run the Chef Workstation PowerShell icon. You'll see it when you install it, it'll be called CW PowerShell. I recommend that you run it with administrator privileges. Then, upon first running it with administrator privileges, verify that the Oracle VirtualBox Manager and Vagrant applications are indeed on the path. If they are not on the path, put them on the path. Now I'll demonstrate this in the video because for example, VirtualBox is not on my path, but to display the path in PowerShell, that's the command you issue. And to add a path, for example, here's a new path I wish to add. To add this path to, um, I can't highlight there properly, there we go. To add this path to our existing path, this is the command in PowerShell. Excellent. So specify the correct path, obviously, for your software installation. You will most likely have installed it into a different folder or directory and a different path than I have. Be aware, when I say this is temporarily added, I mean the change will last as long as the PowerShell terminal or PowerShell console persists. Whenever the PowerShell terminal or console is closed, the change will be lost. That's what I mean by temporarily. Also a snag that I found when I completed this um, tutorial or this video demonstration, the I have an antivirus software called AVG and for whatever reason it has been known, I've experienced it, blocking and quarantining uh, the file ruby.exe. Ruby.exe is a Ruby interpreter that is, so to speak, bundled with or vendored in to the Chef automation application and I found that my antivirus software basically quarantined that, and as a result, I could not complete the lab successfully. So I had to temporarily, so to speak, disable my antivirus in order to run this lab successfully, this lab exercise. Okay, so having taken those points on board, if you follow the guided tutorial on learn.chef.io that I will show you shortly, it is clear, it is very well laid out, and it works correctly. So to proceed with this, lab demonstration, first step is to register for a free account at learn.chef.io. So I'm going to register for a free account. In fact, I already have registered, but what you will do is simply click on the register button up on the upper right hand menu. Um, and when you register, you'll be presented with this window here. So you can either enter in details here, or as I did, I simply signed up with Google. So given that I've already signed up, I'm going to actually click Login. I'm going to select Sign In with Google, and I'm going to enter in my email address and my password. Very good. So it's now going to load the welcoming page, which is a dashboard. It's going to show my courses. Obviously, I've enrolled in this already, so I'm actually going to unroll just so you can experience what would happen. So when you first log in, my advice is you will select 
find courses from the menu. Bar. Now, just to be clear, simply follow the instructions here. So let me close this. Follow the instructions. So when you've successfully registered and signed in, select Find Courses from the top menu. I have just done that. Then from the list of courses, select Manage Your Fleet with Chef Infra. So scroll down and look for the option Manage Your Fleet with Fl Chef Infra. And here it is. So I'm going to select View Course. Great. What's the next set of instruction? Then select the option Enroll and Manage Your Fleet with Chef Infra. Perfect. So I'm going to click Enroll here. Very good. So I'm prompted here with this page here. Great. And now you simply want to select View Course. Very good. So this will now give me an overview of the course. Very good. The breadcrumb navigation trail should look something like course, learn to chef info language, getting started with chef introduction. And um, yeah, I haven't actually selected on, uh, sorry, I, I'm, you're meant to select introduction, apologies there. I ask you then, expand the first option, getting started with Chef Infra. Infra. So this is the first option, getting started with Chef Infra. So I'm going to expand that. And then I ask you to select introduction. Now we're actually going to work through these steps here. That's exactly what we're going to work through in this video demonstration. So I'm going to select introduction. Now mine are ticked by the way, because I've already completed this lab once, just to verify everything works. But I'm going to click on introduction now. And it's going to take a moment or two to load. Excellent. And the breadcrumb navigation aid is here. Just verify that you have that. And then you are good to go. And that's it. So I'm going to close now this PDF, I don't need to refer to it anymore. So from this point onwards, we're going to simply follow the instructions according to the lab. We're on this section here, and we're going to work through each one of these for the duration of this video. Thank you. Let's begin. So as I've mentioned earlier, I'm going to go through this quite quickly in the sense that I'm not going to read this text. You should take your time, you can read it, you can pause the video, you can go to the URL, which obviously you will do, and follow through all the steps that I'm doing, and take your time and read it. So quickly, the prerequisites. In order to get, start, to get started learning Chef Intra, you'll need a basic understanding of Linux and or Windows operating systems, and a good text editor that provides syntax highlighting, such as Visual Studio Code, Atom, or Sublime. Um, actually, I've used just Vim and Notepad. So I got by with Vim and Notepad, um, but that's fine. So I'm going to click Next. Great. So we're now on to the next step, which is configure your workstation. So in order to define the policies you want to enforce in your infrastructure, you use the Chef language. So we need to, as a result, download the Chef workstation. This is a downloadable package that gives you access to the Chef language, as well as a number of other useful development and testing tools. So if you simply click on this button, it will give you the option. It'll open up a new tab here, as you can see. And then you'll simply scroll down and choose the version that's appropriate for your operating system. Now. I'm going to close that because I've already downloaded it. So I'm going to navigate to where it is now. Perfect. And now I'm going to simply run it. I'm going to install it live. So um, I'm going to double click. It may flash briefly uh, when it attempts to install in administrator mode. So please excuse that. So I'm going to simply follow the instructions. Click Next. I agree to the license. There we go. <laughs> I haven't quite read it. Um, I'm going to choose to put it in ops code. Why not? Um, let me verify I don't have a previous version there. I don't. Great. Just in case I had. Um, perfect. And same. Great. It requires 471 megabytes. Just be aware of that. It says I've got two out of three features selected. Yeah, I'm not going to start a login. So it's just this one. That's fine. Next. Click Begin to Install. Now you'll notice the shield symbol is displayed, which means it will attempt to install as administrator, which means my screen will flash briefly. Um, so bear with me when that happens. I'll try and stop it as soon as possible. So I apologize for the brief flashing there. So I think this can take up to a minute if memory serves correct, maybe sooner. So I want to keep it in real time so you get an idea. If there's ever any stages that are very long, I will obviously pause the video. But to the best of my knowledge, best of my recollection, there aren't too many segments like that. So while that's installing, I can be talking you through the rest. So I'm just going to move that there. And let's read on. 
In this tutorial, you will run chef commands from a command prompt on your own workstation to manage a server in the test environment. That's exactly what's going to happen. If your workstation is running Linux or Mac OS, open a terminal like you normally would. If your workstation is running Windows, which mine is, open the chef workstation desktop shortcut, which will be installed. So we'll see that shortly. The shortcut will open up a PowerShell session that's configured to work with Chef. I've already mentioned that you should run that as administrator. Excellent, so this is complete. It says launch the Chef Workstation app. Okay, um, so it's currently running now. And then from the command prompt, ensure that you can access the Chef Workstation by running Chef minus minus version to verify all as well, okay? That doesn't seem to have loaded. Give me a moment, let me verify. So I don't know if you can see that, but there is the PowerShell icon that I'm talking about. So that's the Chef Workstation PowerShell icon. So I'm gonna right click on that and say run as administrator. Again, again, apologies for the flashing. And here we go. So it's loading the PowerShell, it looks good. It also looks a little bit small. So I'm going to right click select properties, have a look at the font, it's at 12. I'm gonna increase it to 16, so it's a little bit more legible. There we go. It'll hopefully be easier for you to see. Excellent. So I'm gonna move that up to here for the moment. Um, now let me go back to our browser. So we're asked to type chef minus minus version. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do exactly what we're asked. I'm just gonna to change to for example, why not the downloads folder? I don't have anything in it, or I don't have much in it. And that's going to be my working directory. Let's verify what's there. I just have the installation file, excellent. So I'm gonna, oops, that's my email address. I meant to actually copy and paste this command. You probably should type it. <laughs> Get your fingers used to typing. Um, let's verify, very good. So uh, maybe if I move this slightly for the moment, shrink so you can see both values at the same time. So Chef Workstation version 0.17, we're using version 20.9, what a difference. So we have the latest version of the software, so you can have a look at the various version yourselves, very good. In order to see the skills you're learning in action, you will need to create a test instance. Now there are many ways Chef Infra, Infra allows you to do this. You can also use cloud providers such as Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Amazon, AWS. But in this tutorial, we're going to use VirtualBox and Vagrant. So you must have VirtualBox installed. There are two ways to install VirtualBox. You can either use Chocolatey or download VirtualBox. I chose the alternative option to download VirtualBox from the Oracle website. Then verify that VirtualBox is installed correctly. So again, I'm gonna take that command. I'm going to go to my chef and just clear the screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna paste the command. And as you can see, it said it's not recognized. So I do not have, um, Oracle VirtualBox on the path. So the first thing to do is, if you want to actually see your path from PowerShell, you can issue the command I've just typed there, and it shows the path there. Now, I actually don't have VirtualBox on the path. So if, as it happens, VirtualBox is installed in my C colon backslash software slash Oracle slash VirtualBox folder. So I'm simply going to add that path to my, that I'm going to add that path to my path, and there you see it. So I'm basically taking the existing path and I'm concatenating the path to my Oracle virtual box and that's assigned to my new path. <laughs> Hit enter. Now I'm going to once again run the command for virtual box manager minus minus version and lo and behold, it found it. I'm using the latest version. Excellent. So I've now verified that Oracle virtual box manager is also on the path. Then we're asked the next step is to install Vagrant. Once again, you can use Chocolatey or I've also downloaded Vagrant directly. And then we can type the version. And to the best of my knowledge, that is in the path, but again, let's verify. And that's a good practice, guys, in IT in general, in computers, always verify everything. When you do something, even though you've just done it, verify that you've actually done it. That may sound pedantic, but no, it's actually a very good skill to proceeding successfully in IT. So if the command fails, you can read that yourself. So we're asked to make a temporary working directory called Learn Chef Infra. Very good. So forgive me for just cutting and pasting. So I'm going to type mkdir, Learn Chef Infra. And there you go. It's created a new directory. I'm going to verify by typing dir. There it is. And I'm now going to cd into it. Excellent. Change, and I've just changed the directory there. I apologize. The font is quite dark, but um, it's here. These are the commands. 
Great, I've completed the first step. Let's, I'm now going to click Next. Now we're going to prep the test environment. When we ran Chef minus minus version, you might have noticed a tool called Test Kitchen in the output. Again, you can read more about this, and I highly encourage you to read it on the docs page. But for now, I'm just going to, we'll just continue on. There are a few ways to initialize a test kitchen environment, but you'll use a chef workstation command called chef generate to create the minimum file structure needed to create the default testing instance. So we are required to run the command chef generate cookbook, cookbook should I say, learn underscore chef from the command line. So I'm going to do that now. Let me clear the screen so you can see exactly what's happening. Maybe make this a little bit wider, just in case. So, let me hit enter, I beg your pardon. For some reason, it doesn't look like I hit enter there. Okay, there we go, it's just taking a moment. Perfect, so before you can continue, three product licenses must be accepted. So, Chef Workstation, Chef Intra, Infra, a bigger part in client, and Chef Inspect. So I'm going to type yes to accept the license. And now it's generating the cookbook learn. And it says our cookbook is ready. So it, what that actually happened, it generated a cookbook and it's commissioning the cookbook to Git. So type CD learn chef to enter into it. Now you can read the rest yourselves there, which I encourage you to do. Um, note, this is important, the default recipe can be found in the subfolder recipes default.orb. That indicates it's a Ruby file. Again, the font is quite dark here, but you can see the commands that are actually typed. Excellent. So, let's actually do what it says, cd learn chef. Let's actually run that command. So, cd learn chef. Let's type dir to have a look at what's there. And these are the contents of the folder that was generated after running the command chef generate cookbook learn chef. Excellent. So for now, you can ignore the recipes default at orb reference in the output and instead focus on a file in the newly created learn chef directory called kitchen.yml, which is short for YAML. So change directories to this folder and view the contents of kitchen.yml. Okay, let me do that now. So I'm just going to use the vim editor kitchen.yaml. So there's the contents of the file. So you can see it's a typical YAML file. So we have driver, the name is Vagrant, some commented out information beginning with a hash. And then we have provisioner at name, chef zero, fine. This is a verifier inspect. We're going to run two test instances. One is a Ubuntu 2004 instance and the other is a CentOS 8 instance. Very good. So the various terms are all explained here. Again, you can pause the video and take your time to read the documentation yourself. Um, but briefly, I'm going to skip towards the end. When you run chef generate command, it generates the kitchen.yaml file with several of these key value pairs already prescribed. So it says open the file, which I've already done, and it shows us the contents of the file. Again, you'll notice this is an earlier version. This is Ubuntu 18.04. We have Ubuntu 20.04. So what exactly does this file do? This file instructs Test Kitchen to use Vagrant to create two instances, one a Ubuntu Linux instance and the other is a CentOS, which is from Red Hat Linux instance. And then we will use Chef Infra to provision the test instances. So on your command line, we can run the command kitchen space list and this command in addition to validating that the YAML file is typo free, will list the information for each instance in your test environment. Okay, so let me do that now. Let me exit this file. Clear the screen again so it's very clear what we're doing. Oops, wrong command. I meant to type kitchen. And what was the second part of the command? Kitchen list, I think it was. There we go, kitchen list. And it will list the instances. So as you can see, it's taken a moment or two. I want you to see how long it takes. I'm purposely not flicking back to the other screen because I want you to see, there it is. I want you to see how long it takes. Um, so as you can see, it lists, lists two default instances for me, the Ubuntu 20.04 and CentOS 08. Excellent. Um, 
Finally, we can create these test instances by using the command kitchen create. This command will download an image of the appropriate operating system and deploy it against your test instances. So it will take a few minutes to complete. So I'm going to type kitchen create. K I T C H E N create. Now this will take a few minutes <laughs> because understandably it's going to download and deploy. Let me expand it because I think there's going to be more information displayed. So it's going to begin by attempting to create a Ubuntu 2004 instance. So it's letting me know that I'm not using the latest version of Vagrant. I have 2.2.8 and 2.2.10 is the latest. Okay, I should upgrade. So it's bringing up the default machine. Um, so it's pulling down the, the formal name as was the package that's pulled from as Bento Ubuntu, fine. It cannot be found. So it's going to pull it down from the, um, so to speak, the registry, the public registry. Um, or I'm using the wrong term there, but bear with me. Um, that's fine. So this is going to take a few minutes. As you can see now, it's currently downloading. Actually, the registry is the correct term, correct term I beg your pardon. Um, so it's currently downloading. That's going to take a minute or two. I've got a pretty decent internet connection. So yes, it's already downloaded. This is the beauty about Vagrant. Just to be clear, what is Vagrant? Vagrant is a very nice tool that allows us to create virtual machines based on a template. It's as simple as that. So we can define the various and customize the configuration of, a, in this case, an Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine. And then we can type Vagrant up as a typical command and it will run the Vagrant machine. Now, Chef, I don't, we will not have to type Vagrant up because that is going to be managed and provided by the Chef software. But if you were to use Vagrant on, on its own, that's how it would work. Again, you can read this in your own time. It's again, naturally it's taking a few minutes. It's now doing all the customizing, clearing any previous network interfaces. It's preparing the network interfaces. Very good. See, it's, it's performing all the customization that's specified in the given template file. It's very, very nice. Specifying SSH addresses, usernames, and the private key. Very, very nice. So you can read this yourselves. It's mounting shared folders. Excellent. So it's now finished creating the Ubuntu instance, and now the text has switched to white to indicate it is now creating the CentOS um, Linux instance. Again, this is going to take a few moments. So as you can see, it is currently, currently downloading it from AWS, from a bucket on AWS S3. Very good. It's now successfully downloaded. It's now importing. And in a few moments, it's now going to configure the CentOS image according to the template. Excellent. So this should only take another, I'd say, 30 seconds or so. But I purposely want to keep it in real time so you can see exactly what is happening. Again, it's it's configured more or less identical to the Ubuntu instance. Very good. You can say the same username, Vagrant, same IP address. I beg your pardon, it's not the same. Same IP address, but different port, of course. It would have to be, <laughs> obviously, because in both cases, we're going to be listening on localhost. That makes sense. OK, so it's just going to do what it's doing according to its template. We're nearly there and finished. The whole thing took 3 minutes and 15 seconds, almost 3 minutes and 16 seconds. Excellent. So um, once the test kitchen has created the test instances, you can log on to the machine using the command kitchen logon followed by the instance, where instance will either be the, the value keyword CentOS or Ubuntu. So the example here is kitchen login CentOS. So I'm going to do that right now. Let me clear the screen again so it's very clear what I'm doing. Kitchen, is it logon or login? <laughs> login CentOS. C E N T O S. Again, just take a few moments. And it's effectively going to log us in to the to the virtual machine CentOS instance. And there it is. So this system is built from Bento Project. Fine. We're logged in. So I can type who am I? And I'm logged in as user Vagrant. Um, let's have a look at the technical spec of the operating system. And there we go. If you want to briefly have a look at what Disks are mounted. Let's display it in usable and use in human format, human readable format, should I say? And there we go. 
So you get an idea of the size and so on. Excellent. So it says, congratulate to log back out of the test instance, simply run exit. So I'm going to type exit and I've logged out of that CentOS test image. Excellent. So congratulations, with very little effort, you've just successfully written your first chef code. The kitchen.yaml file is a good introduction to YAML because the key value pairs you work with are already defined for you. All you have to do is modify the value to match your own environment. But the test instances you created honestly aren't very exciting thus far. In fact, it's just an operating system. Now it's time to decide what policies you actually want to enforce and codify your goals. That's what we're going to look at in the next step. Now, in this step, we're going to write some infrastructure as code, so to speak. So if you approach your policies the same way Test Kitchen approaches its configuration settings, then you can think of various packages, servers, files, and other desirable ingredients in your system as simply key value pairs as well. It's really nice. For example, if you want to create a file called tilde user desktop MOTD, which typically stands for message of the day, you might use the file's resource name key with a value of so on. So we'll see it now, in fact. In the Chef language, these ingredients are called resources. So the Chef automation platform has its own terminology that we have to learn, so to speak, if you want to use it. And the Chef community has, added, has been adding resources to the Chef language for over 10 years now. As a result, many of the common configuration settings that you would likely want to perform are readily available for you to use. So to store your Chef code, we'll need to create another YAML file and list the different resources that you want to configure on your system. So this YAML file is called the recipe. Again, another important term to learn in the Chef language because it will eventually contain the ingredients and instructions necessary to configure a server to your standards, i.e. infrastructure's code. You may have noticed that when Chef generate ran, it created a subdirectory called recipes. Using your favorite text editor, create and open a new file in the recipes subfolder called learnchef.yml. So inside the recipes subfolder, I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to clear my screen. I'm going to DIR, verify the recipes folder is there, and you can see it there. Sorry, you can see it here. If I can highlight it, well done. <laughs> CD recipes. Um, and just to be clear, it asked me to create a file called learnchef.yml. I just want to control C it. So I'm going to use my favorite editor, Vim, learnchef.yml. Excellent. So what are the contents of this file to be? Well, just be aware, let's, the Chef language supports recipes both in YAML declarative format and in Ruby, the language Ruby format. So you may see both the YML, which, that, which is short for, which is the file extension for YAML, and .orb, oops, I did not mean to click on that, and .orb, which is the file extension for Ruby files. Excellent. You need to add resources to your recipe in order for Chef to know how to manage your system. So we need to start by defining the resources key. Okay, so again, guys, rather than me reading a word for word, you can go through it here yourself and it tells you exactly how to build it up. So assuming you've read all that, this is the code we actually want to, sorry, I beg your pardon. This is the code we want to deploy here. Um, where is it? Am I jumping ahead too fast? Maybe I shouldn't jump ahead too fast. So there's resources. We def we're defining a file type. Under this resource type, nest the key with the name etc. MOTD, excellent. And last, let's nest another key value pair with the type to define its type, and then the content. So this is what you want here. These are the contents of the file. Okay, it tells us enter these, these lines and then save the changes you've made to this file here. So I'm going to do that now. Now I think cut and paste works awkward with Vim. Let me try. Yeah, it kind of messes up, but I can quickly fix that. Let me go to just delete word. Very good, delete word and delete word. And uh, let me have a look at your original. Um, so the easiest way to do that is simply to move that like that. And it's indented. There we go, it's indented there. So let me, oh wow, when I moved, it actually killed the terminal. Whatever happened? I'm glad you saw that. These things happen, guys. These things happen. So. I'm now going to actually have to run the PowerShell terminal again. Apologies for the flashing. 
I'm going to have to go to my C downloads folder. Okay. Once again, remember, I crucially mentioned that the path that I set, it only exists for as long as a terminal persists. So I have to re-add VirtualBox to my path, as I'm doing there now. So learn Chef Infra. Learn Chef. It's good that you see this happening, because if this happens to you, what do you do? <laughs> CD recipes. And I was in the process of creating the file called learnchef.yaml. Do you know what? For this case, I think I'll just simply use Notepad, though I don't like using Notepad because it doesn't show you. Um, so when it cannot find a file, do you want to create a new one? Yes. I was about to say I don't like using Notepad because it doesn't show you indentation. But for the moment, let me just put this here. Excellent. Let me go back to Notepad. Paste it in. Notice with Notepad, at least the modern version, it puts an asterisk beside the file name that I'm highlighting here when the file is unsaved. So that's a very quick thing to always check for. Click File, Save, and now the asterisk has disappeared. Excellent. I'm going to exit from the Notepad editor. Very good. Like I said, in, in one sense, I'm old school, and by that I mean verify everything. So to verify the contents of that file, I'm going to simply say cat learn at YAML. And there is the contents that we're meant to have. Let me just verify it. Resource, type, file, etc. MOTD, excellent learning chef is full much YAML. Happy days. So I have successfully saved the changes to the recipes folder. Let me verify I'm in the recipes folder. I am. Excellent. <laughs> um, so what have we done? We now have a chef recipe that will create this file on the various systems that we deploy it to called etc. slash MOTD. And it fills that file with whatever content you've specified. So see, uh, so how do we see this in action? With Test Kitchen. So just to recall, the contents of the file, just to be clear, we've put is learning chef is fun with YAML. OK, so that file should have that message. Just in case you're wondering, MOTD is a traditional thing that existed on Linux. It's a file called message of the day. And whenever someone logs in, if the system administrator wants to inform the users of their system of something relevant to that day, um, to let them know, for example, there could be uh, the system may be unavailable at the weekend due to maintenance uh, that needs to be performed on it, and so on. You get the idea. Um, so it's a very simple concept. So we, how do we see it in action? With Test Kitchen. So in the same recipes directory, you'll find a file called fault.org. When Test Kitchen installs your chef code on the test instance, it will look to this default or B, this recipe file, first to determine how to configure your instance. So you'll use something called an include recipe method to point the Test Kitchen at the new YAML file that we've just created by adding the following to your learn chef recipe default or B file. So we're going to add this simple line here include recipe. Learn Chef. OK. So let me go here now. So remember, we're editing the file default.orb. So verify default.orb is there. There it is. I'll use vim default.orb. And as you can see, it's the exact same contents as what's listed here, except the last line is missing. So I'm going to type shift G to jump to the end in vim, type small o to enter into a pen mode on a new line. And then I'm going to um, paste in the command, and there it is. I'm going to escape to go back into edit mode and colon wq to write it and quit. And I'm going to verify the contents of the file, and perfect, we have it there. Include recipe, learn chef, colon colon learn chef. Excellent. Finally, deploy your changes using the test kitchen command. Specifically, it's called kitchen space converge. So I'm going to do that now. Now, it doesn't say it here. But here's why you might have a problem. So just as while you're watching me in this video, I'm supposed to do it yourself. If you try to run that command there and now, you'll, it'll generate an error. Why? Because you're in the recipe subfolder. You need to go back to the parent folder. Why? Because the kitchen command will always look for the kitchen.yaml file. And of course, it isn't in the recipes folder. It's in the parent folder, which is Learn Chef. Very good. So now I'm going to run the command. In fact, let me just clear the screen so you can see exactly what's changed. So I'm going to run the command now. And here we go. We should get the output something similar to what we see here. Now, this is going to take a few minutes, or not a few minutes, but a few moments. Because remember now, it's going to deploy that very simple recipe to the two instances. 
Specifically, it's going to create a new file in the slash etc folder called MOTD. Okay, um, and you can have a look at it here and you see exactly what it's doing. Very, very nice. <laughs> You're installing a package at a version pin. Yes, in the real world, you should have a version pin. It's a very good point. Um, so it's interesting, just watch, you can see what's going on here. You can read this in your own time. I think it's quite interesting. It's using wget, the various, the so many different dependencies. So Chef ensures, implements um, idempency, which basically means that you can move from any arbitrary state in your system to any specific desired state. It's idempotent. Very, very nice concept. That's a core concept of infrastructure as code. Excellent. When test kitchen finishes, you can use kitchen login instance to verify that the MOTD file was properly configured, i.e. verify it exists in the folder slash etc MOTD and view the contents. So log in. If we log into the CentOS image as illustrated there. So once again, I'm now going to clear the screen. So you can pause the screen if you want to view it. The video, should I say, I'm going to log in. So that's going to take about five or so seconds, maybe 10 seconds. It's going to log in with the username Vagrant. Excellent. And just to verify, you can see there, and who am I? Excellent. And now we can simply, in fact, let's just first verify the file exists, slash, et cetera. And there's a lot of files there. Okay, we're looking for the file MOTD. So maybe I should have spelled wrote MOTD. And as you can see, the file is there. Um, excellent. And if I wish to display the contents of the file, just type cat. And as you can see, it outputs learning chef is fun with YAML. Happy days. Yeah, it's a bummer that it doesn't actually put a new line. Um, so if you want to actually simulate printing a new line, all you have to do is something like this. Um, echo <laughs> space, which means it'll print a space and automatically a new line. And there you go. So there's the contents of the file. Learning chef is fun with YAML. Excellent. So I'm going to log out of that by typing exit. Brilliant. So now we're ready to move on to the next step. We're nearly there. We're, at, uh, we're now on the step configure a web server. The step after that is simply wrap up and then test your knowledge. So we're almost there. So we now wish to configure a web server. So in addition to a file resource, there are many, many other types of resources available that we can deploy using the Chef language. Each resource is designed to solve a common infrastructure problem or automate a common repeated task for IT operators and sysadmins. So to gain more experience with Chef resources, we're going to use our favorite text editor to create and open a new recipe called web.yaml in your Learn Chef recipe directory, just like we did with learnchef.yaml. You'll start by adding a resource key, okay? So this time, using the knowledge, our knowledge of nested key value pairs, we can create multiple types. So briefly, this is what we're going to do here. We're going to create resources. We're going to specify a type, which is a package. And the name of the package is Apache 2, which is the name of the web server on um, Ubuntu. On CentOS, the package is called HTTPD, just to be aware of that. Um, then we're going to create a file resource. And the name of the file is this. And the content is blank. I think I might change that and put something in there. And then we're going to install a service, which is the HTTP Apache web service. And then we're going to say, we're going to invoke an action, which is to enable that service, number one, and then to start that service. So in simple English, we're deploying a web server and we're starting it. It's really, really nice. So let's do exactly what we're asked to do, which is to create the file. Um, what is the name of the file there? Did I skip it? There it is. The file is called web.yaml. So I'm going to just, sorry. Uh, it's nice and short, but I just cut and paste so there's no typos inside the recipes folder. So once again, I'm going to change to the recipe folder. I'm going to, this time why not use notepad again because cut and pasting doesn't seem to work too well. So open up notepad. Do you want to create this new file at that location? I do. Um, I'm going to cut and paste the contents here. Excellent. Control C, back to notepad and control V so you can see it. I'm going to change one thing. 
the contents of the file is blank, so I don't know how you're going to verify. It. <laughs> I'm surprised that I have this because how are you going to verify it work correctly if it displays nothing? So I'm going to very quickly type um, a very simple HTML document. Okay. Um, in fact, I don't need a head, so let's just close that. Um, and then body, I guess. Um, why not put a large heading? <laughs> H1. Put lowercase h1. Um, and then say um, chef is awesome. <laughs> and then I hope you enjoyed this video demonstration. Just so you can show see that it's live. <laughs> and a good old smiley for good measure. Why not? Um, there's a nice long content. Okay. Chef is awesome. Um, Grant, that looks good to me. All good. So again, the asterisk indicates the file has not been saved. So file save, file exit. Excellent. So in addition to name and type keys you're familiar, this new key action, I just explained that. It basically kicks off actions, as you can see, for resources. So um, I don't just skip any step. Let me quickly read her. Default action is usually additive. You can read more in the docs, which I recommend you have a glance, have a read of. You don't have to be an expert, but just have a quick read of it. To see it in action, you'll first need to update the default or B to point to the new recipe, just like we did in the last section. So we have to add this new recipe here. Okay. So um, once again, let us go to our folder, type dir, and you can see there's a default.orb. We're going to edit that now and add a new recipe to the end. So we have our existing recipe that was there before. So I'm going to add a new one again. So let me paste that in, what I've just copied. And there is our learn web. Excellent. So I'm going to save that. What did I do? Oh, capital W by mistake. I beg your pardon. Now, once again, verify it saved it. Always do that. Excellent. So as you can see, it saved it correctly. Very good. Save the changes. Then we wish we have to run config kitchen converge um, Ubuntu to deploy our changes. Because remember, we're installing the Apache server, which is on Ubuntu. Um, Remember, on CentOS, it would be HTTPD as illustrated here. Excellent. So I'm going to run Kitchen Converge now. Let me clear my screen so it's clear. There we go. Again, this takes a few moments, as you, as you remember. Uh, use error. Ah, remember I said you cannot run kitchen command from the recipes folder, subfolder. It requires a kitchen.yaml in the current directory, which as you can see is not there. But if I go back to the current directory, you'll see there is the kitchen.yaml. Ah, well, I've just showed you the error that occurs. Excellent. <laughs> so let me clear my screen and run that command again. And this time it'll work. <laughs> well, it's good you see these things because um, if you encounter these problems, well, then you know what happens. Excellent. So now it's deploying that. Very, very good. Let me just read on. Um, when the converge completes, you can verify your work by once again logging in using the kitchen login Ubuntu command and then type curl localhost to view the contents of the web server's homepage. So we want to run the command kitchen login Ubuntu. So it's still running, of course. It shouldn't take too long because, um, as you can see now, it's now running the recipe here. It already it just ran the recipe learn chef now it's running the recipe learn web. Remember why is it taking a few moments? Well, remember it first has to download and install the um, Apache uh, package, the web server package. It then has to create the file that should be very quick. But then it has to enable the service and then it has to run the service, and then wait to verify the server that the service is actually running. All the time ensuring the operation is idempotent. <laughs> What that basically means is if the package was already installed and the web server was already running, it wouldn't attempt to reinstall it again and it would not attempt to start it if it's already started. Um, like I said, idempotence is the ability from the point of view of infrastructure as code to go from any arbitrary state to any specific desired state. It's very, very nice. So that should only take a few more moments and we should be good to go. Um, and we're almost, once I actually perform this kitchen login and curl localhost, by the looks of it, we have actually completed this task. And there we go. That scrolled quite quickly. So what is it displaying there? 
just let me scroll up so you can see. Um, so I'm going to go down one page at a time. So Learn Chef, install the package. That's exactly what it's doing. Update the contents in this file. Excellent. These are, um, I recognize these commands here. This means it's been added. It's been version controlled, which makes perfect sense. Um, this gobbledygook here is actually not gobbledygook. It's actually the command line parameters that you would pass to a command called sed, which is a command line editor on Linux and Unix that's existed for 40, nearly 50 years. But I won't go into any more extraneous details. There's so much I could tell you about all of this. But it's anyway, reading on. Let me scroll on. Very good. You can read that yourself. Um, excellent. So I'm now going to run the command. OK. No, Martin. Let me try and cut and paste it again, though I really should type it. Kitchen login Ubuntu. <laughs> I really should type it, but here we go. So it's going to log in. Excellent. So I have we haven't logged into Ubuntu before. We only logged into CentOS. So this is the information it displays initially. It's interesting. It shows the system load and so on. Learning Chef is fun. That's the message of the day. Now, to verify that the web service is running, I'm going to say curl localhost. And voila, it pulls down the page. Chef is awesome. It's awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video demonstration. And the smiley, happy days. OK, excellent. So, um, and that's it. Mission accomplished. You have not only configured an Apache web server, you've also learned some Chef language one along the way. You've learned what Chef resources are, what Chef recipes are, and you've learned how to use Chef recipes and resources to configure a server from scratch. Finally, you can exit and clean up your test environment and delete your test instances by running kitchen destroy. So first of all, I'm going to exit from, remember I'm logged in to the Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to type exit to lo log out. And then I'm going to type kitchen, and what was the command? Kitchen destroy. And that's going to destroy our test kitchen environment. Excellent. So then click on the next to move on to the wrap-up stage. And the wrap-up stage, simply the package file and service resources are just a glimpse of what you can accomplish and automate with Chef Intra. To learn more about commonly used resources, again, view the doc pages. And you can see some of the cool things in the remaining sections um, of this online tutorial. So the next step after wrap up is to test your knowledge. And I shall leave you do that. As you can see, I've done it already. <laughs> so um, what are the best practices that describe, or what are the following best, which of the following best describe chef resources? You can read this yourselves. Um, and next, just to complete, it brings us on to a new section, introduction. That is all I don't wish that is all I wish to show you in this video guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it very useful. It was a nice hands-on simple but effective introduction to infrastructure's code using the chef the powerful chef automation platform. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment on the video and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.